Ferrari's 2023 Formula 1 challenger may look like a natural development of last year's fast but underachieving car, but the team describes it as completely redesigned. Those are the words of head of chassis Enrico Cardile, who called the car an evolution, but pointed to major aerodynamic and mechanical changes can see to improve performance and achieve the characteristics the team wants. Cardile talked of Ferrari increasing vertical downforce while adapting further to the new rules that came in last year, and he also highlighted suspension changes that have been made to improve the car's aero and increase the team's setup options. It's too early to say whether Ferrari has achieved these objectives, given it so far only had a 15km demonstration run at Fiorano. But given the speed of last year's car, an improved version of its visually distinctive concept combined with a reliable power unit package, it could be enough to make Ferrari a genuine championship contender. The Ferrari SF23 follows the same aerodynamic template of the 2022 car, rather than going with the trend of others in copying Red Bull's design. The radiator intake and the undercut at the front corner of the side pod have been optimised, but have not significantly changed. Ferrari has compacted the side pod under the radiator inlets and extended the upper shoulder, moving some radiator area upwards and rearwards to create that space. That, and the Vortex shedding front wing slot gap separators, more on those later, suggests they are trying to feed the inlets more aggressively than before. But the radiator rearrangement is not so extensive as to require the rear exit cooling cannons seen on Red Bull last year, and many others this year. The side pod front corner undercut is a bit more aesthetically pleasing than last year. It's not quite as vertical an outer body surface, which will be more sympathetic to airflow direction changes. The front wheel angle in fast corners compared to slow corners creates a massive difference in the airflow in this area. Given Charles Leclerc has talked to the desire to have more consistent characteristics across a range of corner speeds, this is a significant change. He described this aspect of last year's car as open, as in the characteristics vary too much. Ferrari also retains the distinctive scalloped shape of the top surface of the side pods, or the bathtub shape if you prefer. The side pod top surface shape is not quite as dramatic as last year. The exit louvres just beyond the top section of the radiator will improve the efficiency of the cooling in this area. Note also the lower side impact protection cone, which is just under the shell logo. This remains fairly high compared to rivals as last year. What also stands out is the amount of unpainted carbon fibre on the surfaces to save a few crucial grams of weight. That shows the 798 kilo minimum weight limit is still very difficult to hit. The front wing is different to last year's. It has the now common full width slot gap between the front element and the second element. The trailing edge of the rear flap of the front wing is fairly consistent going outboard, then drops away fairly quickly from the inside of the front tyre. This will offer reasonably consistent airflow between the insides of the front wheels and the chassis with differing front wing angles in that area. With this quick drop-off, it will generate as much outwash as possible as the flow coming off the top surface of the front wing connects up to the tyre squirt, which is the airflow that is squeezed out as the front wheel rotates onto the track surface. Together with these vanes turning airflow outboard, Ferrari has been focusing on maximising outwash. This is something these regulations have strived to minimise, and our technical expert Gary Anderson suggests the FIA will be taking a close look at these vanes. The vanes integrated into the slot gap separator brackets separating the top two elements of the front wing have also attracted attention. Mercedes arrived at the United States Grand Prix last year with a version of this design that had to remove the brackets at the behest of the FIA. The regulation for the use of anything like this was rewritten for this year to limit the quantity, the overall sides and the curvature of these components. But there's always the question of what's called primary purpose. If there's something on the car that is legal and ostensibly for one reason, in this case maintaining the slot gap, but the FIA believes it's for another, for example aerodynamic gain, then you can hit trouble. The front suspension is a pushrod configuration. Where the wishbone pickups mount to the chassis, there's a small amount of anti-lift to help support the front of the car and reduce the ride height change under braking loads. The steering track rod is low down in front of, but slightly higher than, the forward leg of the lower front wishbone. The rear suspension is a pull rod design, as last year. 
Given last year's engine problems, new Ferrari team principal Frederick Vasseur has declared reliability to be the top priority for 2023, above even strategic improvements and gains on tyre management. Ferrari had multiple power unit failures in the early stages of last season, notably for Charles Leclerc while leading in Spain and Azerbaijan, and Carlos Sainz while running second in Austria. That led to Ferrari being forced to run the engine package below its optimum performance, particularly in how hard the turbo was worked to ensure reliability. More on how much that could be worth in terms of lap time in a moment. Vasseur said the engine has hit its targets as hoped in dyno running and says that based on that, it's all okay. But it will only be once the car racks up the miles in Bahrain that Ferrari can be certain it has solved its problems. Given F1's power unit freeze kicked in last year, Ferrari hasn't been able to develop the engine. But accessing its full performance will confer a performance gain as Ferrari will be able to push it harder, while permission will have been sought to make tweaks for reliability reasons as is allowed under the rules. Ferrari's head of power unit, Enrico Galtieri, is hopeful progress has been made on its reliability Achilles heel. He indicated the focus was on the V6 engine and the electric motors, and said Ferrari has also revised its assembly procedures. Ferrari already had potentially the most potent engine in F1 last year. If its reliability problems have been solved, it will finally be able to make the most of that performance. With an improved version of a concept that proved stunningly fast, at least in qualifying, last year, and better reliability, Ferrari could be a formidable package. That's why there's a real sense of optimism at Ferrari, as our man on the ground in Maranello for the launch, Scott Mitchell Malm, explains. We've been at Fiorano pretty much all day for the Ferrari launch, and while it's always dangerous to read a bit too much into just a car launch and the early version of anybody's car, you do start to pick up on, on signs from what the team and drivers and also what people are saying off the record really think about the winter that they've had and their position going into the new season. And it is impossible to escape the feeling here at Ferrari that they've actually had a really good winter. There were obvious areas that they needed to improve from last year on the performance side, but obviously on the reliability side as well. And by all accounts, Ferrari's made really good progress with that. It sounds like they've got on top of the reliability problems that caused them to have to run the engine in a slightly lower mode at the end of last season and that has potentially given them around two temps in lap time that's pure performance based on the end of last year so it's not new power that's suddenly been created it's regaining what they lost having to run the engine at a lower level last year so that's a key element but then there's also the usual car development year on year that teams always prioritize ferrari seem very happy in this regard as well both Charles leclerc and carlos Sainz talking very positively about balance changes and improved character Characteristics on the simulator and in the very few laps, few very few kilometers that they've managed here at Fiorano today, that seems to validate what they've seen on the simulator. But we won't know for sure until they go to Bahrain. That was one of the key caveats that both drivers referenced when we heard from them. So we're not really going to get a strong idea until pre-season testing exactly where Ferrari stands, but unmistakably from this launch, there's a really strong vibe that Ferrari has had the winter that it wanted and is entering the new season in quite a strong position. Thanks, Scott. So some very positive signs for Ferrari there. If you're looking for more pre-season F1 content, make sure you check out our videos on two of the big midfield contenders to find out why there's plenty of optimism at Aston Martin, but very little at McLaren. <laughs>